Hey, how's it going everyone? Welcome back to Keeping Fish Simple. So, in today's video, we are going to be talking about blood worms. This is probably going to be a little bit of a controversial video, and it really shouldn't be because this is all just my opinion, and these are all just things based off of my experience with keeping fish. We're going to be discussing blood worms, we're going to be discussing the risks of blood worms, and we're going to be going off of my personal opinion and experience and some other fish keepers as well. And I'm gonna try and give you guys some knowledge that I wish I knew a little bit earlier so you guys don't have to go through the same experience as me. So without any further ado, let's get started. So firstly, I wanna start off with what are blood worms. Now, I'm guessing if you've clicked on this video, you probably already have a pretty good idea of what blood worms are. Basically, blood worms are a frozen food that we normally feed to our fish. Some people get them live. I haven't really seen them live before. Most of the time, they just come in little blood worm cubes. You keep them in your freezer and you just pop them out when you want to feed them and you feed them to your fish. So blood worms are the larvae of midge flies and a lot of the time I think these guys are produced in kind of warmer climates on large scale and then harvested and put into cubes. I've talked about blood worms heaps on my channel and I don't really want to contradict myself with my message of what I'm saying because I've probably talked about feeding blood worms to all the fish that I'm about to discuss but I kind of want to just adjust my message a little bit because now that I've got some experience with this food there's a lot of things that I kind of think aren't that desirable about it and there's a lot of risks with it. So a lot of the time people like to use frozen foods to supplement a fish diet so you might want to feed flakes and you might want to feed granulated foods and just as a supplement you might want to feed some frozen foods to try and introduce some kind of like live food into their diet. Now a lot of the time when people go to these frozen foods yeah there's blood worms, there's frozen brine shrimp and there's frozen cyclops. Those are the ones that I normally see. Like I said, I've talked about them heaps and I want to start off with showing you guys this. So the other day I was on Facebook and I was actually on a Pistogram Australia, which is just like a Facebook group. And I saw this post that was shared. Now, this is by a professor. I'm not too sure which professor. Their first name's obviously Dirk, but I'm not too sure who it is. There's not any like scientific evidence here, but I'm guessing that this is a breeder that's had tons of experience with discus and dwarf cichlids. And this is just their opinion on blood worms. What they've said is if a fish eats something then it does not mean it's the most nutritious food that the fish can possibly be fed. By the way I'm just interpreting this because they obviously don't speak English. It's like if you offer children sweets they will eat them willingly but we know that the sweets are not actually good food. The same applies to blood worms. Secondly we must be careful to distinguish the difference between poor quality blood worms and good quality. There is still blood worm that is imported from Singapore and Malaysia which is fed from the manure of pig styes and this should be avoided under all circumstances. This blood worm literally stinks and if you buy blood worm that stinks, then it tells you what it was fed on and that it is not good stuff. Such blood worm is loaded with harmful bacteria which can easily kill dwarf cichlids and even more likely kill discus if fed with it. High quality blood worm is a lot better, but then one must ask the question, what does it actually contain and is it really a beneficial food? This is where blood worm actually fails dismally. It has a hard carapace, which is really rough, but its actual insides are not particularly nutritious. It does not contain a lot of protein as it contains mainly water in any case. The bottom line is that high quality granulated foods contain much more protein and nutritious components than blood worm does. If you want some roughage in your diet, feed mosquito larvae because they don't come from polluted sources and don't survive on pig manure and runoff. So there's a lot to digest from that paragraph. So the first thing there is the actual nutrition of the blood worms. Blood worms don't actually have a lot of nutrition in my opinion. I still think there is quite a bit of protein in them and I do feed them to some of my fish. So I'm not saying they're not a good food at all. I still like using blood worms for a few different things. The second thing that I wanted to discuss is that carapace, so that hard roughage. In my opinion, blood worms should never be fed to cichlids. So I'm talking about angelfish, I'm talking about discus, and I'm definitely talking about dwarf cichlids like pistogrammas and rams. In my opinion, every time I've fed blood worms, it's just been a nightmare. I'm not too sure why this is. This could definitely be the third thing, which is the bacteria in the blood worms because they're fed on manure. But in my opinion, it's probably due to that carapace. I think that's how you pronounce it. That's on the outside of the actual blood worm. I think that the dwarf cichlids have a different digestive system to the other fish in my fish room, which doesn't allow for that carapace to easily pass through their body. And what happens is when I feed blood worms, it clogs up the fish, they get bloat, and then they eventually get dropsy and die. Pretty much every time I've fed blood 
worms to any kind of dwarf cichlid. Over a long enough period of time, that cichlid just ends up dying from bloat. There's been a few occasions where this hasn't happened, but especially with my rams, if I've done it long enough, it's just ended up being a complete disaster. As you can see up here, I have lots of these pleco aquariums, and I keep a lot of different plecos in my fish room, and I also breed them. Now, from my experience, I've actually had no negative effects from feeding bloodworms, and I've had quite a few positives from feeding these bloodworms to these fish. Firstly, it's a really good food for fattening them up and conditioning them for breeding. Since I've been feeding this stuff to them, I feed it about three times a week. I've had a ton more breeding in my fish room, and females are getting really ripe for spawning a lot quicker than when I was feeding tetradiscus granules and other different types of foods. This might not be the case, but this is just my opinion. I also do supplement these guys with a homemade food that I make with fresh fish meat and beef heart and that might also be helping contribute to fattening these guys up. I think in my next fish room I'm probably going to only feed bloodworms once a week and try and feed as much homemade food as I can. I actually think that's probably helping more than the bloodworms are but nonetheless the bloodworms do work really well with these guys. I also do feed bloodworms to the rainbow fish that are above. They don't seem to mind it too much but I guess in an ideal world I probably wouldn't even feed the bloodworms to these guys. The only fish I'd feed it to are the plecos and I also feed it to my Corydoras. The Corydoras have had no issues as well and it's actually been really beneficial for them as well. So I haven't had any issues with the Corys or the plecos. I even feed this stuff to my peppermint bristlenose on occasion and I haven't had any issues with that. This might be due to them having a little bit of a longer digestive tract. This might be due to them being a bit more hardy but I've never had any issues feeding it to these guys. The only thing I'm going to mention is, and this isn't really due to the bloodworms, but if you have some small plecos, I would highly recommend not feeding it to them because what plecos actually have in their mouths are little hooks. And what happens is if you feed a bloodworm that's too big for the pleco to chew, they might not be able to swallow it properly and it gets stuck in those hooks and the fish will die. I've actually had that happen before and they're choked to death. So that's just a little disclaimer for you there. I do feed bloodworms to my plecos and my quarries. So you're probably wondering, what's my point? Like, what's the point of this video? And the point of this video is to highlight the behind the scenes of what bloodworms actually are and show you that they do mostly come from manure and pig styes and that's what they feed them. We don't really want this coming into our fish rooms and it doesn't seem like a beneficial food for a lot of species. What's my opinion on bloodworms? Well, like I said, I do use them on my quarries and I also use them on my plecos. I've completely stopped using them on my cichlids, so I don't feed them to angelfish, I don't feed them to my discus, and I definitely do not feed them to my rams or epistogrammas. And I'm gonna keep it that way for a long time. You guys might be feeding some of the fish that I've told you not to feed this to right now. And what I would recommend is if you're trying to feed like a balanced diet, change the food that you're feeding from bloodworms to something else. Some other recommendations are definitely frozen brine shrimp, like the big ones you get. They don't seem to be an issue for any of my fish. Another one is live baby brine shrimp. That's a fantastic food for any nano species in the entire aquarium hobby. It's super beneficial. And another thing I might recommend is just making your own food. I found that making my own food has been some of the most nutritious stuff I've ever fed my fish, and the fish absolutely love it. It's basically made from just nice deep sea meat and beef heart, and it seems to be really good for the fish, and I haven't had any issues with bloat with that. I think it'd be impossible to bloat your fish with just pure meat. I guess that's it. Those are the risks of bloodworms in my opinion. I hope you guys learned something from this video. If you did, please leave a like down below and I'll see you guys in the next one.